In this video, we'll use a concept that is useful in kinematics to visualize motion that is called motion diagrams. By the end of the video, you should be able to use the particle model, interpret qualitatively, as well as draw motion diagrams. So what are motion diagrams? Well, motion diagrams are just a visual representation of the motion of an object. You can think of it as the superposition of snapshot of an object as it moves. So think of basically the object and you would take a photo every, I don't know, one second or something like this. Mostly we use it to get the conceptual understanding of the motion, rarely to get numerical values. So what we'll be looking for is when is the object speeding up? When is the object slowing down? What's going on? What's the change in direction? And to be able to introduce the motion diagram, we will look at the very simple object. I want you to imagine that I am in front of the classroom. Yeah, I know that's wild. And that I move forward at a constant speed. So again, we have the person there walking in a straight line at constant speed. What we want to know is what will the consecutive snapshots of the motion look like? This would be the first one. What will be the key features that we should see? So after a little while, we take a second snapshot. So the second pictures or the second time we get the object will be a bit further. And then the third one. But the third one, we have to decide where we put it. Closer to the second one, further, same distance. We have to decide on that. And the key is that we have to remember that between each snapshot, the time elapsed is always the same. And in here, we have something special. We know that the speed is constant. So if the speed is constant, this means that in equal time interval, we should travel the same distance as well. So we have to put the third snapshot roughly at the same distance as we had between the first one and the second one. And then we can go on with this, a fourth one in here and then a fifth one. There's, of course, maybe a bit of variation in here, but that gives you an idea of what it should look like when you have motion going at constant speed. So we now have our basic motion diagram. In practice, however, when you draw them without the help of the computer, you would have to redraw the object each step of the way, and this can become really annoying. So instead of doing this, we'll just use a single dot to represent the object. So we could put the dot anywhere in our analysis currently, but actually the physics will be working and we can use forces and everything on that single dot that represents the object if we put the dot at a place that is called a center of mass. So for a human, it's probably somewhere in here. And we basically just add this dot all the way around. So the dot will replace what the person is, so what the object is, so that we will have an easier way to understand what's going on and also to be able to uh, draw it more easily. So once we have the dots in place, the particle model in place, the next thing is just to get rid of the image itself. Because all the physics is already in the position of the particles, of the dots that we added. So we can simplify a little bit the motion diagram by just looking at the dots. Our next problem though is that there's nothing in here that tells us that the objects, that the object is moving towards the right or towards the left. So in order to do this, to keep track of the time ordering, we will add numbers to the dot. This will show the direction of the motion of the object. So here it would be 0, 1, 2, 3. You don't have to write them all. You could stop at 3 if we wanted to. But this looks a little bit like that. Once the, the particles are in place and the numbers, we can try to add the velocity vectors. Velocity vectors in here will be representing the speed and the direction, so the velocity of uh, the object by connecting an arrow between the dots. So really, it's not super difficult. You start a vector at point zero and you end it at point one. Then you start a vector at point one and you end it at point two. And so it goes until the end. So not surprisingly, if the distance between the point becomes greater or changes, then the length of the arrow will change accordingly, so it will be moving faster or slower. In here it's constant speed, so we expect that the arrow will all be the same length. Alright, so let's look at if you got that. So checkpoint, 
I'm asking you which of the following four motion diagram corresponds to the motion of a ball thrown upward and reaching its max height at the end. So I'm giving you a couple of seconds to think about it. You can hit pause if you need more time. I'll give you the answer in three seconds. So one, two, and three. So the answer in here would be D. The main criteria that let us see that it will be D is what's going on with the distance between the dots. So we know that when we throw an object in the air like a ball, the object will be slowing down. So first one here, A, is equidistant. So the distance is always the same between the dots. So this would represent constant speed. This one is all over the place. It seems to be slowing down and then speeding up again. That's a little word. The C is picking up speed as it moves up. So that's not what we're looking for. So really we want to use D. So the distance between the points gets smaller and smaller as it moves up. And then at the top, if we were to continue, we would know that it stops for a moment. All right, so therefore one instance, the velocity would be zero. So we would see this by having maybe two dots really close to each other or on top of each other. What would be the motion diagram if we included the des descent as well? So the ball goes up as it's going down. Well, actually it's kind of symmetric, so it would look exactly the same. Often, however, to instead of overlay on top, we just put it a little bit on the side like this so that it's a bit clearer. And then if you want, you can put an arrow that shows that it goes this way. And then we would keep numbering, numbering I'm sorry, our values. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And we have a nice graph, a nice motion diagram. I'm sorry, describing the motion. We know how we can easily add the velocity vectors. The velocity vectors would just be arrows in here between each dot. And while I'm doing this, I want you to think about what would we do if we wanted also to include the acceleration vectors. So how should we represent the acceleration vectors in here? So let's look at how we can calculate the acceleration. We know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, all right? So the acceleration by definition is delta v, change in velocity, over delta t, the time interval. But in the motion diagram, the delta t is not really something we control. So the acceleration will go as the change in velocity, delta v, which is just v final minus v initial. So if we look at some motion diagram like this one, that could be the car starting from rest, we will start with the final velocity and we want to take the initial velocity as well, but the initial velocity vector, we want to flip it because we want to have the negative of the initial velocity vector. So if we label things in here to be Toro, we have V final in here, and this one is not just V initial, but it's actually minus V initial. So we want to put them tip to tail as we would do generally when we deal with vector. And what's left in here, okay, this vector there, we can use, uh, take a one in here and just resize it appropriately. So this vector we know will represent the change in velocity. So this little vector in here is my delta V. And although the acceleration and the delta V, the change in velocity do not have the same units, so they don't necessarily have the same size, they will have the same direction. And if delta V is increasing, the acceleration will also be increasing. So we can use this to get some sense about what's going on with the acceleration, both its direction and its variation through time. So this acceleration vector is the acceleration vector that we found at point one. So if I want to take it and move it, I can move it back in here. I can specify that this is the acceleration at dot one, just as I could have specified that the velocity in here between zero and one is velocity zero to one, and the velocity between one to two is velocity v one two. Don't forget, these are vectors, so we need the arrows. So based on that, a question for you. What would be the acceleration at dot two? 
we found the acceleration at dot one. How could we find the acceleration at dot two now? Well, it's a bit of a trick question because really we cannot know what the acceleration at dot two is. And the reason is that to be able to do this, we need to know where point three will be. So depending on where dot three stands, it will affect the acceleration. If the dot three was in here, then clearly the velocity would be reducing, it would be shrinking. So the acceleration would be something that corresponds to slowing down, so an acceleration against the velocity. However, if the dot was in here, then the velocity would be increasing, so the acceleration would be with the motion, so to the right. So depending on where is that third point, we'll have different values for the acceleration. So if you want to find one acceleration, you need to have the velocity both before and after. And to get this, you actually need three position dots. The one where you want to find the acceleration, the one before and the one after. Finally, let's go back to our example with the object that was that the ball with was thrown in the air. So if we want now, we can add our acceleration vectors in this. So you can see that the arrow gets always a little bit shorter, which means that in all cases, we know that the delta v will be a vector that is pointing downward. And since the vel delta v is pointing downward, we can also know that the acceleration vectors will be pointing downward all along. Now, if we did a more careful analysis of the motion, we should find that the acceleration vector will actually always be pointing down and will always be the same size. However, it might not be clear from the motion diagram because it is kind of hard to always get the right change in length. So this basically would be the picture included the acceleration vectors of the object that was thrown in the air until it reached max height. So this clip was about introducing the particle model as well as getting you to be able to draw and interpret motion diagram. I hope you are able to do this now.